Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents has already led to criminal charges against the former president. But it appears the investigators are still investigating. According to reporting from The New York Times, the federal grand jury in Miami is continuing to look into different pieces of the case. In just the last few days, they've issued new subpoenas to several individuals connected to the inquiry. And that's not all. The special counsel's other probe, the one looking into overturning the 2020 election, is also moving right along. Last week, the New York Times reported that a former Trump campaign official named Mike Roman, who tried to hand deliver fake elector votes to then Vice President Mike Pence, was cooperating with investigators. Well, according to new reporting from CNN, that guy is now working with investigators after he entered what's called a proffer agreement, basically a legal arrangement in which defendants will provide investigators with relevant information and it can't be held against them. We also learned this week that Rudy Giuliani, who was behind Trump's fake election fraud claims, has also entered a proffer agreement and has been interviewed by the special counsel's team. Joining me now is Elise Adamson. She's a former assistant U.S. attorney in that role. She arranged some, arraigned rather, some of the first defendants arrested in the January 6th Capitol a riot. She is now a principal at the Beverage and uh, Beverage and Diamond Law Firm. Sorry about that. Hey, Elise, welcome to you. Uh, so, what do you make of the Miami uh, grand jury issuing more subpoenas and continuing its uh, investigation even after the indictment was made uh, public? Uh, is that typical? And what does it what does it say? Well, first and foremost, Michael, thank you so much for having me on. Um, is it typical to continue an investigation after an indictment? I wouldn't say it's typical, but I would say it's not uncommon. A lot of times there will be evidence that is found after an indictment is issued such that investigators want to continue to dig in and bring potential charges. Now, in secret proceedings, in, in cases that are truly not public, Investigators don't typically want to do that because once an indictment is made public, it puts the, the defendants and everyone else involved on notice that they're investigating. But here, we don't have any of those issues. This was a very public investigation. And so it is very reasonable that they would continue on after receiving more information. And so what is likely going to happen is Jack Smith will continue to put people in the grand jury, and they can add additional charges and also potentially additional defendants. It's notable that only one other individual was charged. We had to make it a conspiracy. It has to be one. It has to be two individuals. And so they initially charged Walt Nada, but there's also a lot of people named in that indictment, um, unnamed in that indictment, that ultimately could be held liable for their conduct. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something called a superseding indictment kind of supplementing the one that has already been issued with additional counts and individuals as defendants. So it, just to clarify uh, for everyone, uh, what you're saying is that could then likely lead to additional charges coming um, out of out of what this additional investigation uh, it may or may not find. That's correct. So it would be additional charges arising out of the same investigation. And look, it doesn't necessarily need to be coming to the same indictment. We now have more information about what was happening at Bedminster, and we now we know we have a witness in Susie Wiles. And so ultimately, it may not even be the same indictment. As we saw early on in the, this initial uh, documents probe, folks were put in front of the grand jury in, in D.C., and then the venue was changed to Miami. So it is very possible that Jack Smith is putting additional folks in a Miami grand jury, but ultimately might bring this case in New Jersey, which would be the proper place to bring it, the proper venue for the other classified documents, such as you said in the lead up with the with the classified map, that would be the appropriate venue to ultimately charge him. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Susie Wiles. Uh, what what does um, her being identified at this point um, uh, in this federal indictment uh, say about where the trajectory of this investigation is going and, and how much damage uh, could she cause Trump in his defense? Yeah, I think it's very interesting. I think it means it's ongoing. And again, other charges are imminent. It's very damaging. We heard uh, former President Trump 
say that it, he wasn't really showing classified documents. It was just bravado. These were just random papers he had. But now we have a witness who is likely going to say, no, that was a map. We have someone who is present that can refute Donald Trump's claims. And so I think that's very important because all we have right now is an audio recording. And so, yes, he's making statements that are important for his knowledge and intent that he was hanging on to classified documents, which is important for the ultimate charges in this matter. But to have a witness to say, yes, I actually saw classified documents, that can lay the foundation for those additional very serious charges. I want to ask you, we've got about a minute left, uh, about the January 6th investigation. Uh, you were present at the Capitol on January 6th as it was being stormed. And, and that case has quietly been progressing over the past few weeks and months, uh, with the special counsel's office reaching partial immunity agreements with some of the uh, fake electors uh, in exchange for their testimony. Um, where do you assess uh, that case at this moment, and, and what do you think comes out of it next? I think this case is coming, we're coming very close to an indictment. We now know that they're immunizing folks who were fake electors, which means that they have already zeroed in an illegal theory. And they are essentially letting these people walk off scot-free so they can generate enough evidence to charge this case. I, I think this is a really significant turning point because this fake elector scheme is really the, the, the centerpiece, I believe, of um, an upcoming indictment. Of course, there are other charges related to the violent insurrection on the Capitol itself, but this whole national scheme to replace electors, Biden electors for Trump electors, is a very important feature of this potential indictment. And now that we see so many people going into the grand jury in succession and those that now cannot have charges brought against them, so they have um, a, a, a reason to be as forthcoming as possible, I think that we're going to be seeing an indictment shortly.